Hi there, this video is about the suggested solution of the exam which is of calculus 2 and it is the end term exam and let's see the question paper it has short questions they are 8 in number and it has long questions they are 4 in number and now let's get to the uh, solution of it that is suggested the first was the function that shows the rate of change in a variable over time it is called as the time path and a time path is composed of an initial condition and time dependent component so both of them had time path as their blank and now the function which is integrated is known as the integrand and while converting the marginal savings function to the total savings function the initial condition is introduced in the dependent usually it is introduced in the independent variable but in this case this economic application that uh, is there on this channel it has to be substituted in the dependent variable depending upon the economic sense of you can refer back to that uh, video in which the marginal savings function is converted into total savings and then the integral form of the profit function case of present value of perpetual flow is this this is the blank that needed to be filled and the arbitrary constant in the definite integrals it disappears because of the cancellation plus and minus then the arbitrary constant is called as the arbitrary because it is undefined it's not just unknown it is basically undefined this is why we call it arbitrary and when the upper and the lower limits of a definite integral are the same the answer will be equal to zero because the deduction will yield a zero now we come to the long questions the first question is about the marginal penalty to import this is the marginal uh, function of the imports is a constant function and these are the uh, level of imports when there isn't any income so we are required to find the import function we know that from the derivative we have to come to the integral to find the total function so this is the sense of it writing the marginal function and noting the initial condition looking for the overall import function so integrating it with respect to y we get this value so this is the integrated uh, result and arbitrary constant has to appear here once we note it it becomes the import fun uh, import function but we know that it's not uh, a, a definite because this arbitrary element is there and there we have to introduce the uh, in initial condition y is equal to 0 putting it we know that when y is equal to 0 the imports are equal to 20 so when imports are equal uh, when the income is 0 the imports are equal to 20 this is why in place of m0 we are going to write 20 and in place of uh, y we have already substituted 0 so the answer will be c is equal to 20 so this c needs to be substituted back into this import function giving us the definite solution now there isn't any arbitrary element we can also make a graph of it you can see it's a straight line because the import function is a linear function of in the next question is about the producer surplus the um, inverse supply function is given and we are also given price so the very first thing we can do is to find the equilibrium output by putting this 5 into this function and getting the uh, equilibrium output so uh, primarily uh, we have noted the given function then we have made a diagram in order to visualize the situation we are in search of the producer surplus which is equal to this so it will be the difference of this rectangle and this area under the curve so uh, we are going to do this as we said earlier that we need to find the equilibrium output by using this price so we have done that it's uh, now is equal to 3 now the formula as we already saw in the diagram the rectangle minus the trapezoid that is the area under the curve and we know that the area under the curve is represented by the definite integral of the given function within those limits and those limits are 0 till 3 the 3 is the equilibrium out and the rectangle area simply is the pro product of the equilibrium output and equilibrium price so we have substituted these two values also the inverse supply function is substituted solving this is not a new thing on this channel you can see other examples like this and it will give us this answer which is mentioned here so this will be the producer surplus and this is uh, happening when there are three units at equilibrium and the price of each unit is five dollars now the next question is about the doma growth model and uh, if the productive capacity remains fully utilized over time that is the equilibrium condition in the dynamic sense is given so in this question we don't have to develop this equilibrium condition it is already we have to develop the time path however of the investment which is suggested in the domers growth model for the economy to remain in the long run so we start from here 
and on this channel you can see that the whole proof is done but the prior part is not given here because it is not required so using that information uh, you can refer back to doma growth model on this channel and find all of these steps so i am just going to scroll through this and you will see that the investment time path is developed here it is general in nature but introducing initial condition we get the definite time path of the investment over time for the sake of long run macroeconomic equilibrium given by the domers growth model in which rho that is the productive capacity per capital and the march propensity to save they are assumed to be constant which is a simplifying assumption now the final question is about the consumer's demand function which is given and we are required to find the consumer willingness to so we are not required the consumer surplus here we are required consumer willingness to pay and the equilibrium output is 3 so equilibrium output is plotted here 3 this is the inverse uh, demand function it's a quadratic function with a negative sign with the q square quadratic term so this is why it's a, a sad parabola so we are not plotting it in the negative domain because we know that it is um, a demand function may it be a uh, inverse demand function so it is going to remain the first quadrant with positive price and the positive out so here we are not required consumer surplus we are only required the consumer willingness to pay which is equal to this area and for that we simply need to introduce the lower limit and the upper limit to this function in order to get this shaded area so this is that uh, symbolic representation of what is understood from the diagram. This is the uh, inverse demand function which is given. So we can solve this easily and uh, here we are. The solution is happening here and once we solve this completely we will get a certain answer which is 264. So the consumer willingness to pay is 265. Rupees. So this is the uh, suggested solution of this calculus 2 um, exam. I hope you have found it useful. You may like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thank you.